So welcome to the 2019 Tracer Breeze uh, 20 RDS. We're gonna start right here. It's this black port, there's your power inlet. So you get this power cord here. So you notice that little notch right in the bottom there. Lines up with that notch there. Let's plug it in, a little eight turn locks it in. And then you use the threads in the back there to really lock it into place. As you follow it back, you come back to your standard 30 amp end. Most campsites will have that, they'll just plug right in. Now if they don't, we do provide you with a 15 amp adapter as well. So if you wanted to plug in at home, charge your batteries, run your fridge, things like that, you got the power to do so. Right in your back bumper here, if you just pull that plug out, you've got your sewer hose. So take note of those two ears right there. Because those are how we're hooking it up. And the hose does extend out approximately 20 feet. So right down here, the sewer cap just turns off. Now notice the exact same ears there as you had in the sewer hose. So the exact same way to hook it up, just stick it onto there, turn it over, and there you go. Now when dumping your tanks, you're gonna start with this black valve on the right here. Your black valve controls your black tank and your black tank is filled from your toilet. So when dumping, you're gonna to wanna to dump that black out first, let that drain out, and then the gray will go last. What the gray is filled from is your uh, shower and your sinks. So generally cleaner water just helps keep that uh, hose cleaner for you. These two water lines back here, you just open them up, just low point drains. So they're just, just letting all the water out of your water lines. So if you're leaving the trailer for a week or so, if you're, you know, winterization, whatever it may be, you want to drain the water out of the trailer, just open those up and then clear it all out. Right here is your city water connection. So you take a pressurized water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and it'll fill up all the water lines throughout the trailer. Right above it here is your exterior shower. So you'll get a key just like this one here. Stick it into there, turn it over, open it up. Hot and cold water, three foot hose. So if the dog's out getting cold or whatever, you can spray him off before he goes inside. Then right beside your city water connection, here's your black tank flush. So over time, you may go to uh, dump out your black tank and you'll go inside and check your monitor panel. And you'll notice it's still reading a third or two thirds or whatever. So you just take your same water hose from your city water connection, just stick it into here, turn on that water with the black valve open, and that'll just flush out the tank, just clean out whatever's in there causing a misread. So this black port right on top, there's your fresh water hookup. So you just open that up, take your water hose, stick it into there, it'll fill up your fresh water tank. Right below it is your satellite inlet, so coax cable into there, fires up the TV location. Right in the center here is just a solar panel hookup. So you take a solar panel, plug it into there, it charges your batteries. And then right in the bottom is your cable inlet. Right down here, so this little blue line there, if you just open that up, is just your fresh water drain. When it comes to, uh, when you are filling up your fresh water drain, or fresh water, you will uh, have the venting coming out of here. So once you got the water spitting out of there, that's how you know you're full. And your storage compartment here, they are held up just by magnets. So you can see we provide you with a water hose as well as that 15 amp adapter we were telling you about. Customers also opted for a couple of accessories as well as the head and bars, the weight distribution set there. This bar right here is for all of your stabilizer jacks. So what they do is they'll just attach onto the end there. Just turn it, cut it down. And what you're looking for is just to contact the ground, firm up the trailer a little bit, and that's all you want. If you try to lift the trailer with these things, they generally just fold and bend. And what these will do is they'll just take out that uh, little bit of bounce when you're walking through the trailer and just keep it stable. So all you're looking to do is contact the ground and then I usually just give it another turn or so just to firm it up. Okay, and just like that. Now if need be, you know, over the weekend, if you gotta come out and tighten them up, that is fairly normal. In the front here, you just got a little service light, so if you're doing anything at night, you can see what you're doing. You can see the customer's offer for the bike rack here. Right underneath the bike rack, you just undo these two little knobs. you got your propane tanks. So you can't really see, oh, you can actually. Right in the top of your regulator here is just this little arrow. You can see it's currently pointing over to this tank, letting you know that we're drawing off of this tank. So we'll open that up. We'll run off of that. Now on the front of your regulator, now this part you can't really see, there is a little dial with propane in the system, that dial will be green. With uh, propane not in the system or your tank has gone empty, it will be red. So that's generally just what you'll check. And if you do have it go red, you're just going to take that little dial that was pointing to the left there, switch it over to the other side to run off of the other tank. 
All right, back here in this box is your battery. So like we were saying, as long as you got something, a solar panel plugged into the side, that battery's charging for you. As long as you're plugged into your short, short cord, that battery's charging for you. Up front here is just the other end of your storage compartment. Again, stabilize the jack here, and in the two back corners. The little leash latch there for the dogs. Power outlet here, GFI protected, resets inside. So if you want a coffee maker out here, TV, whatever, you got the power to do so. Right here's your furnace. So just keep in mind, this does get hot. So if you're ever running a furnace, you just don't want anything drooped over that. And then right in the very back here, we've got your hot water tank. So all the controls for it are inside. However, before you ever turn it on, you just want to come out, pop this pressure relief valve, make sure that bit of water comes out. A bit of water coming out is just letting you know that it is full and it's safe to fire it up. Firing it up empty just runs the risk of burning out elements, things like that. And then right in the very back here, this black port, nothing for you to worry about back there. That is just a service port for your fridge. Then inside, when it comes to your steps, you're going to open up your door all the way. Handle over to either side and the stairs just kind of come down towards you. Right in the bottom of your stairs, you just got these little pins here. We just pop that out. You can stretch out your legs to whatever length you need so that they're sitting level. And then we'll make our way inside. Right as you get inside, right up on the wall here, you got your slide out control. So just press and hold out, slide makes its way out. The two light switches here, the one on the left is your uh, awning light, I believe. The one on the right is all of your ceiling lights. Once the slide's out all the way, you'll just hear a couple hums from the motors, just letting you know that they're at their full extension. And that's that. And then on the very right, here's your awning control. So just press and hold out, awning will make its way out. And once the awning's out completely, you'll just see a little white flap at the end coming down. So once that flaps down, that's all you're looking for. Once you got the awning out, you've got two different options basically. You can pull this arm in, tighten that knob down. So if there's a, if it were raining, all the water's just gonna run off rather than holding it. And if you like this angle better for more shade or whatever, you can grab the front arm and do the exact same thing. There you go. And before you ever bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure these are loosened off and the arms are fully extended, just so that you're not bending anything. Press and hold in, it'll make its way back in. And once it's in all the way, it just stops once it contacts the trailer. And right beside your entrance is also your fridge. So you got the power button in the top left here, turns it on. With the button on the right in, it is just running on auto, in which case it's gonna run off of AC power, then it'll switch over to gas if necessary. If you wanted to run it solely on gas, you can press that right button so that it comes out, then you might get that check light just for the second there, just to let you know that it knows it's, that you've changed uh, your setting there, and then it'll fire up. If that check light were to come back on, it's just letting you know that it hasn't lit up, at which point you're just gonna turn it off and back on to reset it. I don't know if you could hear that through the video, but I just heard the click of it coming on, so we know that's going. All right. And then the top is just your freezer portion here. And then below, we've just got your fridge. Now in the back here, this slide there, if you slide that up, you get a colder fridge. Down is warmer. And that's that. And then right down on the floor, here's your converter. So just press the top and it'll pop open. All of your breakers in the center there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle, so off and then back on. And all of your fuses here on the side. If a fuse ever pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one's popped. Also by your entrance door is your fire extinguisher, standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Right above your sink, you just got the little push button for your uh, light there. Right above the sink, You've got your little blue pouch that contains all of your owner's manuals, remotes, whatever for the unit that you might need, as well as your keys. The storage just below the sink there. The microwave here is fairly standard. 
nothing I can really teach you there. The light above your stove, as well as the fan. So remember, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. Just the bifold cover, just fold it back. Turn the dial over to the little flame, hit the sparker, and it's probably right up for you. On the right is your stove, so turn that over to the little pilot light and hit the sparker. And as soon as it clears the air out of the, out of the line there, see that little pilot light come in. There we go. So once you got that going, you're just going to hold that dial in for another couple seconds, and then you can release it and it'll stay. And then just select your temperature. It's a fire up for you. Once you're done, you can bring it back to pilot. It'll hold the pilot light for you. However, if you're going traveling or leaving the trailer for a while, you're just gonna make sure that's right off. And then the button on the right there is your light for all of your dials as well as in the oven. Making our way down again. We just got your stereo there. So press the little dial, turns it on. After that, fairly straightforward. Zone 1 is your inside set, zone 2 is your outside set. And press and hold to turn it off. TV here, so you just got the one latch. You pull it off, point it wherever you like it. You can see it does have full motion. Right above it here is your antenna control. So that little button there, you can see that green light's going on. If you were to press that button and turn it off, that's your antenna turned off. And up in the front, this dial right here is your actual antenna. Just press up and then you can turn your antenna looking for your best signal. However, whenever you're going traveling, you do want to make sure that it's fully rotated to the side there, as it says. And then in the front is just closet storage space. You can see the customers got in their smart tote as well. More storage. Lift up the bed for storage space as well, right underneath. And then in the slide here, the light's just on its own push button. And that's that. You do have storage underneath your dinette as well. And for your dinette bed, you're pulling this tabletop up. And then the two legs are coming out. You're just going to plop your bed down on the wooden supports there. Grab the two back cushions. And that's that. So down on the floor here is an LP detector. So if there's ever a propane leak in the trailer, propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy will detect it and start going off just like your smoke detector. And speaking of smoke detectors, that is right up here. Here we go. And then thermostat right here. So power button turns it on. It's going to start from off, hit mode, and it'll go into your fan speed. So when it comes to fan speed, generally you're going to want to just leave it on auto, unless of course you're solely looking to move air at a high or low speed. So from auto, hit mode again. It'll go into cool. Select your temperature on the side there and that'll fire up the air conditioner. Once the air conditioner is going, you basically got two different options with it. You can have this louver here closed, in which case it's using all of the ducting to move its air, or you can open it up and it dumps all of its air into the living room here. So generally what I'd do is I just let, I open that up as soon as I get to my cab site, I just let that cool off the uh, main living area, and then close it off and start cooling off everything else. After cool, if you hit mode again, it'll go into furnace. Again, just select the temperature. And fires up the furnace. The furnace is moving its air through all of the wall ducts there. There's one by the entrance, there's one down here. And hit mode again after furnace, it'll come into off and turn everything off. Into the bathroom. Now you do have the motion sensitive lights in here. The uh, If you look in the back here, they've just got a little switch. 
So you've got one with one line and one with two lines. So we have it with the one line that is just on. You have it with the two lines that is motion sensing. So it will automatically turn itself off after I think it's 30 seconds to a minute. And then as soon as it senses motion, it comes back in. So the roof vent here turned to open. Switch in the back turns on the fan. Standard shower, hot and cold water there. Little medicine cabinet. And right on the wall here is a GFI reset. So test on the side there, reset in the center. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, come check this. Your monitor panel here, in the very bottom, you've got your pump switch. Turns on your pump, draws out of your fresh water tank. And right above it here, you can see you've got your battery charge level. So C is charging, G is good, F is fair, and L is low. So because we're plugged in right now, we are currently charging. Fresh tank, so as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea with your black and your gray tanks. Over on the side here is your hot water tank control. So the little lightning bolt on the left here turns it on with electricity. That's that. And the little flame here on the right turns it on with propane. So when you turn that on, there we go, fires right up. If you were to get this little red light there in the center, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up, in which case you're just going to turn it off and back on to reset it. Well, that's about it I can show you for this thing. If you've got any other questions on it, please give us a call, 204-237-7372.